Get this audiobook for free today at theaudiobook.co.uk. Enjoy having written it later. Me first. COVID-19 really helped. Not just the government-mandated paternity leave. I never would have taken a year off to be a full-time dad if the world hadn't actually shut down. But also, it's good to stop and take stock once in a while. Covid was a sort of half-time whistle on life, an enforced break that made us all do a little audit. What am I like? What do I like? What's useful? What's next? I can never travel back in time and talk to myself age 25, but there is such a thing as time travel. It's just that time only moves in one direction at one speed. I will get to meet my future self. I mean, I'll have to wait, but I'll meet me in 20 years' time, albeit in 20 years' time. And I can bring gifts to myself in the future. I can give myself money if I save, good health if I take care of myself. You get the idea. Whatever I do now, I know I'm going to get back then. I think if we're being honest, we all have the same time preference. We all value today over tomorrow. That's why it's easier to sit on the couch and do nothing than it is to work or exercise. We all prefer comfort and pleasure right now, but also understand whatever we do today, we will have to live with tomorrow. So the stronger your preference for the future, the better. That's stating the obvious. But how much time do you actually spend thinking about it? Do you want comfort right now or do you want happiness in life? Well, ideally both, but it's a constant trade-off. It's a balancing act. You too. Last, and let's face it least, this book is for all of you, dear listener. Yes, I'm putting myself and my son ahead of you. More about priorities later. You may think I'm very talented, funny and charming, not to mention the good looks and humbling modesty. And to you, I say thank you. This book is for you. Of course, you may think I'm an unfunny, one-note, talentless prick. In which case, when you think about it, my achievements must seem all the more remarkable and interesting. Look how far I've got on one tank of gas. If you're one of those people, this book is definitely for you. I don't think any of you are special. I don't think any of you are destined for greatness. And I don't think it's going to just happen for anyone. Please don't take that the wrong way. I don't think I'm special either. And I don't think I was ever destined for fame and fortune. I don't think anything happened to me. Obviously, if you do think you're a unique human being destined for greatness and it's all just going to happen for you, well, good luck with that. You can stop listening to this now and might I suggest something from the fantasy section. The premise of this book is, if I did it, you can do it. Maybe not what I did exactly, but my story is, I had a boring life and now I have an interesting life. That's the abridged version. The publisher insisted I expand on that. Lots of people want to make that transition. Well, here's the how-to. The road I took, the road I'm still travelling on as a comic, it contains all the wisdom I ever needed. All the wisdom and any advice I have to give, I learnt it all from comedy. My story is the story of a stand-up comedian. But just to be super clear, in case you're listening to this and you're hard of thinking, stand-up is a metaphor for life. You know, a metaphor, like all the world's a stage. You don't have to tell me, Mr Shakespeare. I'm on that stage and I'm working as a professional killer. I hope you enjoy the book. And if you're not totally satisfied, if you don't feel that you've had a better life because of this book, check in again when you're 102 and I'll give you your money back. Now, some of you will die before you hit 102 and that's on you. Just know that I would have made good. Superpowers of the average comic. If I could have any superpower, I'd go for... Cold War era Russia. I'm going to argue there are five superpowers that all comedians have. Things that we do better than regular folk. Does that mean we're better than regular people? Yes. Yes, it does. Comedians are standout human beings. We have so many superpowers we should wear capes. If you've ever watched a comedian and felt envious of any of their skills, great. It's all learnable. Which means you can do it too. I hope I'm not puncturing too many illusions when I say none of it is magic. It's all in the preparation. Comedians are much like magicians. It can be difficult to see what they're actually doing. That's why asking comics to improvise a whole show is like asking a magician to do real magic. What you see are the results of the trick. What you don't see is the hidden craft that goes into making the trick look seamless. You see the ta-da moment, not the guy cleaning rabbit shit out of a top hat. What we comedians do is take a group of people and we change their state, their chemistry, their mood. But how is the comedian actually doing this? Let's break it down. First, we have communication, the most obvious superpower of the comic. You watch a comedian on stage, and they seem to be having a completely natural conversation with 3,000 people. It's a learnable skill. 
Most people are terrified of being on stage, so the ability to simply get up there in the first place, let alone get a point across, to emote and convey nuance, looks pretty impressive.